on the bench today, I have an AR SP3 stereo preamplifier. It's a tube type unit. Very rare piece. This one has been recapped. The work looks really good. But now it has developed a problem. And that problem is, is one channel is lower in amplitude than the other. And when you turn on this tone switch, there's an abrupt pop in the audio. So let me demonstrate that. And then I'll show you what I believe the problem is. All right, here's our test setup. We're in stereo mode. Input is at spare. I'm using a CD player as the source. That's going into one of my homebrew ST7 amplifiers. We have a pair of Polk audio monitor speakers. So I'm gonna fire this thing up and I'll show you guys what's going on. All right, I'm gonna start with the tone switch off. I'm gonna play some non-copyright music here. So you guys can see what's going on. So right now, the balance is normal. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the tone. Hear that? It swells down and comes back up. I see my balance is still okay. But now watch when I turn the contour. You hear that? I pretty much lost the right channel. I can go back. She comes back to life. So looking at the schematic, I've determined that the contour pot, when the tone switch is on, actually passes the loudness signal, okay? So if this pot has an open spot, it could be causing that pop. I don't know. But I'm going to get an ohm meter. We'll check that contour pot, but I believe it's the cause of everything. So the contour pot is a dual 500K type. So I'm going to measure the rear section. My meter is on 2 meg. She's wide open. Here is the front section. You can see we've got about 1.3 meg. So I believe that rear section is going to the channel that's cutting out. So let's change that pot. Luckily, the owner had got a hold of AR and he ordered some replacements. So I have one hidden right there to install into the AR. Here's the back side of that pot. You can see the wiring is fairly easy to get to. Looks like there's two mica caps installed on a couple of the pins. The good thing is, is there's no sub panel so I don't have to pull the face to change that pot just got to be very careful that I put everything back where it belongs so here's the pot pulled from the front panel you see we got a couple resistors feeding these two terminals the mica caps going to the center so what my plan is is to take the other pot and I'm going to move these wires one at a time from here to the new one to ensure that the installation is accurate. So I'm using Chemtronic Solderwick to desolder the terminals on the pots. Then I'll use an X-Acto knife, bend the wires so I can remove them and shift them over onto the new potentiometer. All right, front section is complete. Now I have a road map for the rear section. Well, there's the old one. Got the new pot installed and wired. Need to get the knob on it, and we'll retest. All right, this is a retest. After changing out that contour pot, we'll do the same thing I did before. So here's our balance. I'm gonna turn on the tone switch. Still got the swelling, unfortunately, but the balance now is correct. So there's one other thing I noticed. After you've cycled the tone switch, then you don't get the pop. So something is actually charging. 
I did notice something on the schematic which I think might be causing this problem. Let me show you. So as I stated earlier, this preamp has been recapped. And in that process, somebody replaced these two capacitors with 0.01 microfarad 100 volt Sprague orange straps. But if you take a look at the parts list, C23 and C24 show they were a matched pair of Mylar caps. That's not what's installed. And I believe the AR did that for a reason, and that is in this tone circuit, so we may be hearing the charging of those Sprague caps. So my next step is to find a matched pair or some 1% caps, install them in this amp, and see if that eliminates the problem. So I located in my archives some 0.01 microfarad Panasonic Mylar caps, 5%. I went through them, matched up a pair, installed them in the preamp. Let's see if that makes a difference. All right, so I've made a little discovery on this contour pot. Number one, this preamp is full of microphonic tubes. I'll have to talk to the owner about that. But if you leave the contour control slightly advanced to the left, the popping is almost non-existent. You would expect a little bit of a pop since it is a mechanical switch. And I really don't know how I can eliminate that. But there's definitely something that charges. See, now you hardly even hear it. be chasing a problem that is just an inherent part of the design of this preamp. So the next thing I need to do is go through and check the 12AX7s and get those microphonic ones out of there. So I've already sorted through the 12AX7s that are in this preamp utilizing the Micronaut. So here is a good 12AX7, which would go back in the preamp. See, she's warmed up. This is triode one, triode two. Tap on her. She's nice and quiet. That is a good 12AX7. Now here is one that I removed from the unit. Take a listen to that one. Here she comes. You hear that? She's pretty microphonic. And this one here, Telefunken, also unfortunately microphonic. Wait for it to warm up. Triode 2, but listen to Triode 1. Ice picky. Then I heard some rumbling in the preamp, and these Electroharmnix tubes have some heater to cathode leakage. So take a listen to this. So it comes up, here it comes. Hear that? That is heater to cathode leakage and I actually found two tubes in there. Both electroharmonics, both with the leakage. Which would really give you some terrible audio. Hear that? Doesn't matter what triode you're on. 
those are bad. And it's a little bit microphonic too. So I sorted through his tubes, got the best ones in the preamp, and I'm letting the owner know it's time to buy a complete new set. So yes, in case you're interested, D-Lab is manufacturing the Micronauts. This is the Model 2, and I have a Model 3 in the works. They can test preamp tubes only, so it can do the EF86, 12AX, Ts, and Us, and then 6SL7 or 6SN7. That is the extent of what the Micronaut can do at this point. 